Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we are exploring the dollar props rune, a new feature in Swelt 5 that revolutionizes how we handle component props. The dollar props rune is a key part of Swelt 5's component API. It provides a clean and intuitive way to declare and manage props in your components. What is dollar props? Let's start by understanding what dollar props does and why it's important. Dollar props is used to declare component props. It replaces the export let syntax from Swelt 4. It supports destructuring and default values. It allows for easy TypeScript integration. Basic usage of dollar props. Let's look at a basic example of how to use dollar props. In this example, we are declaring two props, name with a default value of world and greeting with a default value of hello. This replaces the export let syntax from Swelt 4. Renaming props. Sometimes, you might want to use a different name internally than what's passed from the parent. Dollar props makes this easy. Here, we are renaming the data value prop to data value for use within our component. Rest properties. Dollar props also supports rest properties, allowing you to collect any additional props. This is particularly useful when you want to pass through additional attributes to an element. TypeScript integration. One of the great features of dollar props is how well it works with TypeScript. By defining an interface for our props, we get full type checking and auto completion. Dollar bindable for two way binding. While props are read only by default in Swelt 5, you can use dollar bindable to allow two way binding. This allows the parent component to bind to the count prop, similar to how export let worked in Swelt 4. Now, let's look at a comprehensive example that ties together everything we've learned about dollar props. We have two files, app.swelt and userprofile.swelt. In userprofile.swelt, let's break this down. We define an interface userprops that describes the shape of our props. This gives us type safety. We use dollar props with this interface to destructure our props. This is like opening a package of props sent from the parent component. Name and email are required props. Age is optional, and we are making it bindable with a default value of 30. This allows to a binding with the parent component. Role is optional with a default value of user. We are renaming the data tested prop to data tested. This is useful for props that aren't valid JavaScript identifiers. REST props collects any additional props we didn't explicitly name. In our app.swelt, we use the user profile component like this. Here, we are passing in all the props we defined. The bind, age syntax enables to a binding for the age prop. We are also passing a data tested and a class, which will be collected in the rest props in user profile. This setup gives us a flexible, type safe way to pass data between components with the added power of two way binding when we need it. Let's run this program in VS Code and check the results. This is how the project looks. Now, let's try changing the age from both the parent and child components to see how the age updates. Key takeaways To wrap up, here are the key points to remember about dollar props. It simplifies prop declaration in Swelt 5. It supports destructuring, renaming, and default values. It works well with TypeScript for type-safe props. Dollar bindable allows for two-way binding when necessary. It replaces export let, dollar dollar props, and dollar dollar as props from Swelt 4. 
The dollar props rune makes working with component props in Svelte 5 more intuitive and powerful. It's a great example of how Svelte is evolving to make component development even easier and more type safe. That's all for our exploration of the dollar props rune. In the next video, we'll dive into more advanced topics in Svelte 5. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.